Hey there voters. The November 4th general election in New Mexico is right around the corner. And I'm Julianne Grimm, editor of the Santa Fe Reporter. I'm here today with Matthew McQueen, who is a Democratic candidate for the New Mexico House District 50. Thank you so much for coming to meet with us today. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, so is this your first crack at a political office? Absolutely. First time. Why are you doing this? Um, <clears throat> so I've, uh, I've always been very involved in the community, working to make the community a better place. You know, whether it's Galisteo or Santa Fe County or really statewide. And you know, I just sort of wanted to keep doing that. And this was the next logical step for me, uh, a way to be more involved in making New Mexico a better place. Now, District 50 includes El Dorado mm -hmm. and the southern half of Santa Fe County, as well as the part of the Manzano Mountain area a little further south. Where do you live within that district? I live in Galisteo, mm -hmm. uh, which is towards the northern edge of the district. The district is 100 miles long. It's parts of four different counties, uh, and it goes all the way down to Mountain Air and Rio Communities, which is in Valencia County. Uh, so it's a very big and um, geographically difficult district. Now you are challenging the incumbent in this case. Uh, Vicki Perea, a Republican, was appointed by Governor Martinez to fill a seat that was um, held by a Democrat who passed away, Representative Stephen Easley. That's correct. So what do you think about the composition of the race? Do you feel like it's going to be close? I do think it'll be close. Um, it's a it's a Democratic leaning district. It historically has been a Democratic seat. before. Uh, before Stephen, uh, it was Rhonda King's seat, and before Rhonda, it was actually Gary King's seat. So it's been it's been interesting on the campaign trail. He he has a particular interest in my race, even though he obviously has a race of his own. Um, that being said, uh, you know there um, while there is a Democratic registration advantage, um, it's it's about forty five percent Democratic, thirty five percent Republican, and twenty percent Independent or declined the state. Um, so I do expect it to be a close race. What is it about your candidacy or about the things you'd like to accomplish um, that you feel like would convince a voter of any affiliation to uh, circle your name? Well, the, the best thing I, I think I can do is talk to them uh, personally. And I've been doing everything I can to get out throughout the district and meet with people and you know hear what they're concerned about and tell them what I'm about. And I, I, I believe if people meet me, um, they'll get a better sense of me. Uh, there, there has been some, some polling, and uh, while I, I'm sort of ahead based on being a Democrat, I'm way behind in name recognition. And you know, my opponent, not only is she the current representative, because she was appointed, not elected, um, she's run for several different offices. And so people, you know, they hear her name and they think, oh yeah, I, you know, wasn't she something? And it's like, no, she ran for that office but didn't actually win. But she has a lot more name recognition than I do. So what are you about? What are you telling them? Um, you know, my, my personal passion, uh, you know, I, I'm a lawyer, I have a business degree. My personal passion has always been conservation, land conservation. Um, I don't think that's the biggest issue in the election this year. Uh, I think the big big issues this year are education, and there are many different aspects of education that are extremely important. Uh, jobs, and then the minimum wage. Um, so those are the things I talk about most. Mm -hmm. So do you think that she's done a good job as a legislator? You know, she was only at the legislature for 30 days. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in that short time, she voted against raising the minimum wage. Um, so, you know, I don't think she has much of a record, and the record she does have, you know, I, uh, I would have voted differently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned your law practice, mm -hmm. um, and we know there are lots of lawyers at the Roundhouse. There are actually surprisingly few. Oh. Um, I'm told there's only about seven or eight in the legislature, hmm. which is amazing if you think about it. Uh, and a lot of the people I've talked to, including um, other candidates, other representatives, other uh, and some of the state senators say it would be helpful to have a few more lawyers at the roundhouse. Hmm. Okay. Believe it or not. Yeah, I guess we yeah. have you know Senator Worth and Representative Eagle. Are both are, lawyers, right, so. and so they're right here in Santa Fe. Right. That, that's what I was thinking of. So if if you land in the roundhouse, we would have a third lawyer in our uh, local delegation. 
<laughs> so you There's mentioned nothing wrong with that. Uh, okay, <laughs> uh, you mentioned the minimum wage is something that um, Representative Perea voted against. Mm -hmm. Something that you would have voted differently for. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you think really has the momentum and has the legislative support to get a little further in the next session? Uh, absolutely. Um, the, the the to me the only question is whether the governor would support it. Um, and it's been on her desk before, and she vetoed it. And in the last session, they, uh, the proposal was to do it as a constitutional amendment, because that's something she can't veto. Um, so yeah, it, I think it has the support, um, and I, I, think, I think it is, it's time that we raise the minimum wage. What are some other um, legislative priorities that she'll have uh, if you get there? Um, you know, d definitely jobs in the economy. Uh, there was a proposal that didn't make it through last year, which will come back um, to create uh, incentives for bringing high paying jobs, either creating high paying jobs in New Mexico, so it applies to existing businesses, or bringing high paying jobs to New Mexico. And it's a, it's a post performance tax incentive. So if you create that job, then you get a tax benefit. Instead of the state trying to pick winners and losers and throwing money at companies that and maybe it doesn't pan out. Uh, this is something that's been done in Utah with great success, and that's the kind of thing I would support. Okay. We've heard some other um, states and cities even back east are talking about helping pre-revenue startups, <laughs> um, which I think is a nice way of saying businesses that aren't earning any money yet. So what you're saying is we ought to um, tie the incentives to successful businesses. I, I think that's true. And I mean, I think there there's a, a role for uh, economic development, uh, local economic development grants, and funding, you know, some seed money, um, but those are obviously really risky ventures, and, you know, I don't think we're in the position to be a, a major investor in a lot of, um, you know, hopefully good ideas. It, it's, um, that's a risky strategy, and I think there are venture capitalists out there who can fill that role. Well, when you use the word conservation, it makes me think about all of the environmental issues that people in Santa Fe in particular are interested in. Mm -hmm. um, how do you rate the state's performance on environmental issues, and what would you like to do to change that if you want to? Well, um, I mean, there's, there's land conservation, which is, you know, the work I do. And we're conserving, you know, scenic areas, working lands, ranches, farms, things like, things like that irrigated agriculture in particular to protect uh, our food security. Um, there are other, you know, other conservation environmental issues um, that the current administration has been horrible on. And there were some, you know, rules adopted under Governor Richardson that are, you know, just being wholesale repealed. Um, and the current administration has actually let industry write their own rules. And I think that's um, dangerous for our, our environment. It's dangerous for our health. And I think it's actually, it goes back to the economic development issue. Mm -hmm. Businesses need a steady and predictable business environment. And what we're getting now is this, this cycle of regulation, no regulation, regulation, no regulation. And I think that's just really counterproductive. Uh, I think we need, we need strong uh, fair regulations that, to regulate our businesses so they can plan for the future, so they know how to conduct their operations, so they know you know when and how to hire. Um, and the rollbacks have been happening under the current administration, um, I think are contrary to the public interest. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, Representative Perea said her schedule was too busy to join us for this interview, so we hope that you've heard enough from uh, Mr. McLean, and we'll see you at the polls.